What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome to Ghost of Shishima. This is a game that I'm really looking forward to playing for a long time. I'm going to give you some tips in the in this video that kind of should help people out when starting or just kind of starting the game. Now this is going to be the opening cutscene so I don't want to ruin anything for anyone or spoil anything so if, if you don't want to know anything about the game you may not want to watch this so that's kind of just a heads up. But I had I recorded a lot of stuff today, and I could not get my mind off of this opening cutscene. I thought it was absolutely epic, so I figured why not use this for the very first video I make about the game here on the cha on the channel, of course. Um, like I said, today I'm going to give you some tips about some things that the game does explain, but doesn't explain too well. Now, it does do a good job of kind of teaching you how to play. There's a few things, I think, along the way that it does not give you too much of an in-depth kind of tutorial with so the first thing we're going to talk about is talking to uh you know like uh some new characters that you meet along the way and the more that you progress the game you will unlock more characters that you can kind of associate with and you will unlock things called tales for those characters doing these tales will unlock uh abilities and, and upgrades for your character so be sure you do all the tales that you can before you progress in the main story line too much i think doing a lot of these tales helps out i know how some people are you know, I'm like this myself. I will do, you know, I'll get doing one thing and I will continue kind of on that track and kind of forget about some other stuff you can do in game, even like side quest. And I really feel like the side quests so far are very tied into kind of what's going on at that time when you unlock it. So I kind of have the feeling if you waited too long for the side quest, they may not be as uh, unique, I guess, once you play them, if you've waited to kind of a later time in game to do them. So I would recommend... You know, doing the side quests as early as you can. And also make sure you're doing all the kind of separate side stories with all the characters that are the tales because they will unlock certain abilities for your character. Another thing I can tell you that is very neat in game, because I've been doing a lot of exploring because the game is absolutely gorgeous and it's just fun to explore in open world games, in my opinion anyway, is you will come across things like camps. And this is where the Mongols will have camps set up. You can take over these camps and, you know, eliminate all the enemies. But... While you're doing these camps, you will have the option to do optional objectives. And I always recommend that you do those optional objectives because it will give you points to your stance. And your stance is very important. Of course, your stance is going to depend on when you're fighting certain enemies. Enemies have different types of weapons, whether it be swords, swords and shields, uh, spears, and so on. And your stance is very important when fighting certain enemies because different stances perform better against different types of weapons. Uh, or, you know, different types of enemies just in general. So be sure that you're doing those optional objectives when clearing camps. Another thing that is very neat in-game is the different clothing items that you can get, the different style outfits. And they all have their kind of own uniqueness in-game. I'm not sure how many there are. I'm sure there's probably a lot more than I'm about to discuss. But there are three that I have, you know, uh, read about and have experienced in-game so far that I think are very useful. The first, of course, is going to be your you know, your battle armor, your samurai armor. So make sure if you're ever in a fight that you have that samurai armor equipped. There's also a, a piece of, uh, or a set of armor or clothing you can get that's called Ronin, which is really made for sneaking and kind of being that silent assassin. And you also can get travel attire. Travel attire is good to use if you're just exploring because it will kind of show you some cues and give you, uh, or show you things that you would not see normally if you did not have the travel attire on. Now, your clothing is very easy to change out on the fly, but always try to remember to have the right clothing on, the right gear on, the right armor on for whatever you are doing in-game at that time because a lot of this stuff, like I said, will help out depending on what you're doing. Like I said, exploring, fighting, trying to be an assassin, whatever the case may be. Like I said, I'm not sure how much armor or you know clothing there is in-game. I'm sure there may be more later on down the line. And of course there is, I will start making a lot of different videos, you know, within the game or, you know, kind of about the game. That's pretty much what the channel here is about. I do a lot of different games and, you know, I just enjoy gaming. This this seems like it's going to be a very enjoyable game with a lot of in-depth stuff to it. So just kind of keep a heads up for all the different clothing you can find in game and know exactly what it does and when is the best time to use it. Um, I would say one of the biggest tips I can give you so far that I have learned with combat and that is watching enemies' feet. They're going to be doing a lot of bobbing, weaving, talking, heads moving, arms moving, torsos moving. But like from the knees down, from the knees to the feet, you can always kind of tell exactly what that enemy is about to do in combat. Uh, you can kind of tell what their next move is going to be. This comes in handy in all types of combat, but really in a standoff. If you have not played yet, a standoff is as 
probably one of the coolest things in game I've seen so far. That's where you challenge a warrior to a standoff. And you get kind of this cut scene where you're standing facing each other. And of course, you're, the game is going to prompt you to hold down the triangle button on your PlayStation controller. And you're going to have a split second decision when to let off that button and just pretty much take down that enemy with one hit of your blade. If you do it wrong, of course, you're going to take some massive damage. And you're going to be surrounded by a lot of enemies. If you do it correctly, like I said, you're going to just destroy that enemy with one hit of your blade. And the other enemies that are around are going to kind of be scared for that second because they just saw you uh, destroy, annihilate uh, completely this uh, this big, you know, bad boss that, you know, was supposed to challenge you. So I, I think it is very uh, a very neat thing in game, but also the easiest way that I can uh, kind of describe to do a, uh, you know, a standoff is watching the enemy's feet. As soon as you see them take a move towards you, let your finger off that triangle button and you will pretty much win every single time. When it comes to points of interest in game, be sure you're paying attention to the visual cues in game. There's uh, certain animals, birds and fox will come out and kind of you can follow them to certain points of interest. But you also will kind of notice that these certain points of interest in game also look different kind of landscape wise. So you may not always have to have those animals to lead you there. You can kind of start to recognize these the longer you play, the longer you're in game, you will start to recognize where these points of interest could be. So you don't always have to depend on the animals to lead you there. You can kind of go find them yourself, just kind of open world exploring. And last but not least, one thing I can tell you that is very cool about all open world games is exploration and finding loot. There are so many places so far I have found loot, whether it be in home, homes and bags, boxes, that kind of thing. Uh, some homes will have little holes up under the house where you can crawl up under and find loot under the homes. So there's a lot of different areas that I have found and probably some that I have not even discovered yet myself where there's loot. And of course, you're going to need all of this loot in game materials to upgrade armor, to upgrade weapons. So just keep in mind, make sure you're out looting when you're doing stuff because it is an open world game. There, You never know what you might find when you're out kind of just searching uh, in that open world. You never know what kind of material things you could find. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment. Are you excited about the Ghost of Tsushima? Have you played it yet? Are you looking forward to playing it? Uh, leave me any comments about anything you might like to see me do videos on with uh, kind of involving the game. And of course, if you liked it, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, Please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance to share the video, please do. It does help out the channel a lot. I will let you guys know there is a Discord for the YouTube community. All the information for that, if you would like to join, is down in the description. And also, GT Racing is down in the description as well. That is the affiliate here on the channel. If you guys are looking for gaming chairs, office chairs, that kind of stuff, give them a look. they got pretty much everything you could need. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.